Well, thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I too would like to acknowledge the traditional and owners of the land that we meet on tonight, the people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respect to their elders past and present. I'd also like to thank the Australian Learning Lecture for inviting me to introduce the second biennial lecture series on the new success, and our speaker this evening, Charles Fidel. My role tonight is to set the context for this lecture, and I'll focus on three points. Making sure we start this discussion in the right place. Secondly, the challenges we are facing and the changing nature of work. And finally, getting our education system right. In setting the context, I think it's very important that we start with the most important issue. Whenever we talk about education, we always start with where we are, what's wrong with the system, Who's not getting what funding? And that's a very, very backward way of looking at things. We need to start these conversations with where we need to be. And I think it's very clear that when we take a good, hard look at the world around us, we are in a very, very different world. Our economy and our society are facing significant disruption. We are seeing report after report after report saying that somewhere between 20 and 60% of jobs will be replaced by new technology, including robotics and artificial intelligence. This will mean that knowledge workers are likely to be both key areas of disruption and key areas of growth. Some traditional industries are in decline and traditional business models are being disrupted, they're transforming or they're disappearing. Our businesses and workers are having to compete on a global stage. Jobs that people trained for 20 years ago have been replaced, offshored, or completely changed. A global marketplace also means greater opportunities for specialisation. Final products will no longer be made in one country. Production will be interest increasingly based on skills, not just cheap labour. And this means skills and capabilities will become tradable commodities in themselves. These bring opportunities as well as threats to Australia. The nature of the employment relationship is very dramatically changing. People are quickly signing up to new business models like Uber, where they can be masters of their own destinies. And it's not just the world of work that's changing. How we communicate is fundamentally different. We have world leaders communicating via apps and on smartphones, one of them on Twitter, uh, and our kids have an intuitive understanding of technology. We are in a very different world. And this new world is very scary for a lot of people. They worry about their future and their children's future. But we need to stop and remember that big disruptions in our society have ultimately been positive. They have meant progress, and progress is an innately good thing. Big disruptions like the Industrial Revolution and automation, in my view, made the world a better place. They meant the end to dangerous jobs, ones that were physically taxing and often monotonous. They also began the end of child labour in a lot of the Western world, something that we still need to do a lot of work on. And the destruction of jobs isn't new. It's existed throughout the 20th century. Jobs have come and gone and will continue to do so in this current phase of disruption. The key difference between our historical disruptions is our mass education system, which if properly organised can smooth the bumps of transition, which is why it is imperative we get education right. But what does it mean to get it right? What does success look like? Charles is an advocate of a complete rethink of our education system, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what he's got to say tonight. And while a complete rethink is challenging. We need to be up for what people like Charles are telling us. Because we often see a fundamental rethink is just too hard and it becomes a very convenient excuse for inaction and inertia. But a fundamental rethink does not mean it all needs to be done at once. We can take incremental and careful steps. Take for example if you think of our economy, the reform of our tariffs, of our competition, of our financial markets, these were big changes and they were staged in over a long period of time. 
We've spent far too much time tinkering at the margins with no clear purpose and no clear end goal and no clear sense of what modern success looks like. In tinkering, in thinking of education, we must return to the basic question of what are we preparing young people for? At the moment, our system through mechanisms such as the ATAR drives everyone to focus on preparing young people for their next qualification, when what we really should be preparing them for is life, to realise their potential, to have a life of purpose and fulfilment, what skills they need, not what test they have completed. We should be preparing our children to be decent people and good citizens. We should be preparing them to be thinkers and doers, to have an understanding of history and culture and our place in the world. And we should ignite a passion for learning. And our institutional settings at present are not the best place always to do that. Let me give you one brief example. My partner and I run a small language support centre, primarily for refugees and very disadvantaged people. One of our students is a young boy in year 11 who has extremely poor English through no fault of his own. I was struck then recently when he was given a grade of zero for an assignment he submitted on an extremely complex topic. Three times a week he comes to our centre in his own time to get extra support. He tried really, really hard on this project. He submitted something on time, he worked at it and he was given zero. Whatever happened to five for effort? What do you think that experience has taught him? What kind of love of learning has he got now? So often our schools are a process of ritual humiliation for the different and the disadvantaged, and we cannot allow that to continue. We need to break down structural barriers to create change and be open to radical and new ideas. Let's consider briefly three examples. First, a classic classroom academic model will not be the best approach for everyone. Let's unleash ourselves from the institutional constructs for those it does not work for. Second, while education is the great leveller, homework, a foundation of our schooling system, is often the great divider. It is often a test of do you have someone at home to help you. And many kids today, as I experienced in my childhood, either had parents who were working or did not have the capability to help. Third, the ATAR is about making it easier for universities to pick students, not focused on giving students a learning experience that allows them to reach their full potential and prepares them for life. So I've picked a few of the sacred cows here, but that's why I've called them out. There should be no taboo topics. Everything should be on the table and we should challenge the core ideas that we hold dear. And note the new ideas.